Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 37 of the chapter Equilibrium. The topic of this video is common ion effect in the ionization of acids and bases. What is a common ion? We are talking of equilibrium. Let us take an equilibrium of this acid that is acetic acid. CH3COOH is acetic acid. When it dissociates, it gives rise to H positive and CH3COO negative is the acetate ion that is produced. And an equilibrium exists because it's a weak acid. So what would a common ion, addition of a common ion mean? You understand that this equilibrium has got two ions, the H positive ion and the CH3COO negative ion. And since it's in water, you would have the H positive of water and OH negative ions of water too. Anyway, whenever, but the primary reaction here is this one. And the water and water reaction is actually the secondary reaction. So whenever you add a substance which acts as a source of one of the ions which are there in the primary reaction, that source is providing an ion that is common to both the reactions. An ion that is there in that substance plus it is an ion which is actually common to this reaction. So such an ion which is added, which is common or which is the same as one of the ions in the primary reaction is known as a common ion. So when we say common ion effect, what does that mean? How does the addition of a common ion affect the equilibrium? Since we are in the chapter is equilibrium, our idea is to find out what is the effect of a common ion on equilibrium. So when you have acetic acid dissociating into H positive and CH3COO negative, now this is what we've been doing all these uh, in all the previous parts. HAC is another way of writing acetic acid just to make it a simpler. AC is for the acetate ion. So HAC is acetic acid will give you H positive aqueous plus acetate ion. It is nothing but CH3CO negative which is written as AC negative. Right? So uh, just a simpler way to write the same reaction. If you want to find out the equilibrium constant for this reaction, you would have the concentrations of the products divided by concentration of the reactants. And this time we've chosen this reaction because writing AC is easier than writing CH3COO negative. I know chemists are really lazy people. We don't believe in writing so much. We would rather write this. So we have Ka that is equilibrium constant or dissociation constant for this acid would be H positive and CH3COO negative or acetate ion divided by the reactant which is HAC or CH3COOH. And it has been found that under standard conditions, the value of this that is at 298 uh, Kelvin temperature, the value of Ka for this reaction comes out to be equal to 1.8 into 10 to the power minus 5. <clears throat> In order to understand common ion effect, I would like you to remember that we have done Lee Chatelier's principle in one of the previous videos. And uh, I would encourage you to watch that video, video and the consecutive one or two videos where we explain, where I explain the Lee Chatelier's principle better with problems and all. And uh, the various, you know, there were various uh, mm, changes that can be, various factors that can affect the equilibrium which come under the Lee Chatelier's principle like the change in concentration, change in pressure, addition of a catalyst. There were different uh, five or six points there. So I would encourage you to watch those videos. But here I just tell you what Lee Chatelier's principle was. According to Lee Chatelier's principle, whenever you create a disturbance in the equilibrium, the equilibrium is a balance. The reaction is balancing. Why is it a balance? Because at that time, at equilibrium, the concentrations of the reactants and products, they appear to be uh, stagnant or stable. They only appear. Why? Because the reaction in the forward direction and the backward direction becomes equal. So it appears to us that the concentrations of the reactants and products are fixed, while actually the, both the reactions are proceeding at the same rate and hence it is an apparent stagnant Part, while actually it is the most active, the reaction is most active at this part, at this point, because both the reactions are taking place at the same rate. 
So since it's a balance, according to Lee Shatler's principle, if you try to disturb this balance by doing anything, the reaction tries to re regain that balance or it tries to undo the effect of that disturbance so that it comes back to the it comes back to balance. For example, let us take an example of this, you know, mm -hmm. okay. this two sided pen. Let us assume that this is a cylinder, a bottle that has water in it, which is half filled. Okay, and I have I hold it with a wire or something, I, uh, I hold it and it's hanging. If the water is equal on both sides, it's balanced and it is straight. But if due to some reason the water moves to one side, what will happen to this? It will tilt to one side and the balance is spoiled. So that is what happens due to a little push on this side or due to a little, uh, due to some reason, due to some disturbance that was created. If the liquid was pushed to one side, the liquid goes to one side and therefore now the balance is spoiled. In order to regain balance, what should happen? An equal amount of push should take place on this side so that the liquid moves back and now again both the liquid on both the sides is almost is equal and it hangs straight. So <coughs> excuse me. So this balance which is spoiled as a result of any effect, the reaction tries to counteract that. The equilibrium shifts in such a way that it regains the balance. It gets back the balance because an unbalanced situation is not desirable. So I just read the Rishi Atlier's principle, the statement of it. The change in any of the factors that determine the equilibrium conditions of a system will cause the system to change in such a manner so as to reduce or to counteract the effect of that change. If there is any change brought about to the equilibrium, the system will, it will cause the system to change in such a manner so that it reduces the effect or actually nullifies the effect of that disturbance. Reduces or counteracts, absolutely goes against it, counteracts the effect of the change. Why am I mentioning this when I'm talking of common iron effect? Because when you are doing, when you are adding a common iron, what are you doing? Let us say I'm adding H positive ion or let me say that I'm adding the acetate ion. If I'm adding some compound that has that also provides the acetate ion and when I put it in the same solution, the concentration of one of the products goes up. The acetate ion, whatever its concentration was at equilibrium, now by adding more acetate ion, what have you done? You have brought about a change in the concentration of one of the products and therefore the equilibrium is disturbed. It is now, it is now, I have added more acetate ion, so it has bent to this side. So if the equilibrium has shifted to this side, in order to go back, what should it do? It should, it should put weight here. And how will it put weight here? By increasing the concentration of CH3COOH. If it increases the mass of CH3COOH, the equilibrium will automatically, the weight here will increase and it will go back here. That is what happens. So as you add a common ion like CH3COOH to the solution, the reaction starts proceeding in the backward direction according to Lee Shatley's principle in order to undo the effect of that common ion that has been added. And that is what happens when you add a common ion. If you had added H positive or if you add CH3CO negative, the concentration of the products goes up. As a result, in order to decrease the concentration of the products, what will happen? The reaction, the backward reaction will start taking place faster so that it consumes that extra product and provides us with that much of reactant so that it regains the balance. Now, the balance would be such, it will be a new balance. If you remember, the masses, the mass has changed. You have more product and you are producing more reactant. So ultimately, some of it will react, will cause the initial, whatever was the concentration of acetic acid, it will go up a little and the concentration of these will go down after addition of that uh, common ion. And this equilibrium which is established would be a new equilibrium, right? So this was what would happen if we add a common ion 
on the basis of the Le Chatelier's principle when a common ion is added to a substance at equilibrium the effect of the common ion is such addition of the common ion is such that the reaction proceeds in the direction which goes towards the undissociated substance acid or base because we're talking of acids and bases towards the undissociated acid or base in order to uh, nullify or counteract the effect of the added added uh, substance which is which in this case is a common ion so addition of acetate ions will decrease the concentration of H positive ions same would happen with the addition of H positive ions it would decrease the concentration of CH3CO negative ions the reaction would proceed in the backward direction <coughs> so equilibrium shifts towards the undissociated acid so common ion effect how is it defined common ion effect is defined as a shift in equilibrium on adding a substance that provides more of an ionic species that is already present in the dissociation equilibrium when you add a species that has an ion which is common to this particular reaction it provides more of an ionic species which is already present in the dissociation equilibrium such an ion is a common ion and what effect it has on equilibrium is known as common ion effect and that effect actually takes place in terms of the, the according to the Lee Chatelier's principle now let us assume that we have to evaluate the pH of a solution of 0.05 acetic acid when you add on adding 0.05 moles of molar solution of acetic acid to uh, acetate ion to it so you have a solution of 0.05 molar acetic acid to which 0.05 moles of acetate ions have been added and you want to find out the pH of the solution so we write the equation we write the equation as HAC will get dissociated into H positive and AC negative. And what is the common ion that has been added here? Acetate ion. And how much of it? 0.05 moles of it. So when the equilibrium, before the equilibrium was um, established or at the initial time when the reaction started, you had 0.05 moles of HAC and no moles of H positive and AC negative but then you added 0.05 moles of acetate ion to it as the common ion so i add that to the acetate ion and let us say that x amount of it was the x is the extent of ionization if x amount of hac dissociated then according to the molar equation if one mole of h AC dissociated one mole of H positive and one mole of AC negative were formed so if X moles of HAC dissociated then X moles of H positive would be formed and X moles of AC negative would be formed but from HAC X moles has been removed because that much has dissociated so at equilibrium what would the concentration be at equilibrium the concentration of HAC would be 0.05 minus X because that much has been removed so it is 0.05 minus X what would be the concentration of H positive X moles has added to it so it will be X and what would be the concentration of acetate ions it would be X which has added from this reaction and 0.05 moles of the common ion that was added so the concentration of acetate ion at equilibrium now would be 0.05 plus x right so now if we want to find out the value of ka <coughs> the value of ka would be 0.05 that is the concentration of the products divided by the concentration of the reactants so the concentration of the products is 0.05 plus x that is concentration of acetate ion into concentration of h positive ion divided by concentration of the acetic acid now acetic acid is a very weak acid and since it's a weak acid the extent of dissociation or the degree of dissociation in this case would be very very low in comparison to the concentration that is 0.05 moles of uh, acetic acid x is a very small quantity 
and since it's a very small quantity you can neglect it in comparison to the value 0 0.05 so we say 0 0.05 plus x and 0 0.05 minus x since x is a very small quantity if adding x to 0 0.05 hardly makes a difference then subtracting x from 0 0.05 would also hardly make a difference so we could say we can assume that 0 0.05 plus x and 0 0.05 minus x are actually almost equal to 0 0.05 so in order to make our calculation simpler we can ignore the value of x so we say what does ka become now ka becomes 0 0.05 because plus x is uh, this is ignored so it becomes 0 0.05 x divided by 0 0.05 minus x here minus x is ignored so divided by 0 0.05 now 0 0.05 and 0 0.05 get cancelled so you're left with x so ka is actually equal to x and what is x x is the hydrogen ion concentration right that is the aim when you want to find out the ph of a solution what is the aim you what is ph it is minus log h positive so you are trying to find out the concentration of the hydrogen ion uh, of the hydrogen ion and that is x so x is the hydrogen ion concentration and we know the value of ka from the table you can find out for this reaction for the dissociation of acetic acid at standard temperature pressure conditions is 1.8 into 10 to the power minus 5 so we take one point the value of ka we substitute it here as 1.8 into 10 to the power minus 5 is equal to the hydrogen ion concentration and the minus log of this value of the hydrogen ion concentration will give you the value of ph so what do we do ph would be therefore ka that is 1.8 into 10 to the power minus 5 is equal to h positive and ph is minus log of h positive which means it is the minus log of 1.8 into 10 to the power minus 5 and when you calculate this this value comes to be equal to 4.74 so that is how you found out the pH of a solution to which a common ion had been added so such this is these are the kind of numerical problems that you would be getting where you would be expected to calculate the pH of a solution to which a common ion has been added and we will do one solved example of this in the next video and uh, only then we would proceed to the next topic which would be the hydrolysis of salts and the pH of their solutions. But with this I'll end this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye bye for now.